Cool. <clears throat> Okie doke. Morning, everybody, or afternoon, evening, wherever you happen to be. Um, uh, we have the usual uh, Hackfest planning readout from Todd, and um, and then uh, we've got a couple of project reports, and um, we can uh, pick up the discussion on Hyperledger Labs if there's time. Uh, I hope there's time, and maybe we can get that to closure. Um, are there any other agenda items people need to bring up? Okay. If not, Todd, you want to take off with uh, the Hackfest stuff? Uh, sure thing. Uh, before we go into the upcoming dates, uh, just circling back, we did send out a survey after the Lisbon Hackfest. Uh, thank you for everyone that uh, submitted your feedback into that. We do factor that into upcoming Hackfest. So two things I do want to call out. Uh, one is for future Hackfest, we are extending it to three days. So essentially what we're going to do is add a day zero uh, before the two-day Hackfest. And that's really going to be focused on developers that are new to Hyperledger, uh, helping folks come up the learning curve uh, to be able to better participate in the Hackfest, uh, bring new developers into our ecosystem. Uh, and in doing this, it'll also allow the two-day Hackfest to really be focused on more um, more hacking, more advanced topics, uh, as opposed to kind of splitting time, partly helping new people come up the learning curve and then trying to simultaneously hack. So we think that format is uh, going to work well. Um, and so the next Hackfest, we will be trying that for the first time. Uh, and then the second piece of feedback that we're factoring in is it sounds like people do enjoy the flexibility of the unconference format, kind of figuring out sessions on the fly. Uh, but there is a preference to have a little bit more structure in place for this so that people understand where to go, when topics are happening. Um, and so we're going to put uh, a little bit more structure in place for Los Angeles. Um, so please, if there's topics you want to cover, um, things you want to hack on, projects you want to work on, uh, cross-project collaboration, get that dropped into the Google Doc as early as possible. And we'll start to map this out a bit in advance. Uh, as always, we'll leave some flexibility in the agenda uh, for topics on the fly as they come up. Uh, but we think this will be an improvement for the next Hackfest as well. Um, so moving on from there, uh, we do have the next uh, three Hackfests pretty well mapped out. So uh, the next one will be February 20th to 22nd in Los Angeles. Uh, that first date, the 20th, will be the, the day for new developers. Uh, 21st, 22nd will really be the core Hackfest. Um, this will be at UCLA. Um, we have a fantastic venue there. We were just waiting for the ink to dry on that. Uh, but registration should go live today. Uh, so I'll be sending that out later this afternoon. Uh, onward from there, it is looking like Dubai, uh, April 29th to May 1st. Um, there is an event there, Future Blockchain Summit, I believe is what it's called. Um, so we're just working out the details on this. We'll be in touch with more uh, soon. And then the next one is for our European Hackfest. Uh, we'll be bringing that back to Amsterdam, June 27th to 29th. Um, but that is uh, firmed up, so we will have more details on that soon. So hopefully having these mapped out many months in advance uh, will be better for everyone's travel schedule, planning, um, and for us to promote and get new, new faces there. Any questions on any of that? <clears throat> I see one, one question from Hart in the chat window. Um, in terms of day one out of the veterans, um, we're figuring that out right now. Um, I, you know, I think Tracy, Dave, and some other folks from our um, immediate staff will be there for sure. Um, but that's, that's up for discussion right now. So I think let's come back in the TSC next week and figure out who from uh, the more the veterans should be there. Sounds great. Thanks. So yeah, I, just... I think that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so I think for you know, yes, veterans. I think um, I think it would be ideal if um, if uh, as many of us can show up so that we you know can handle the, the questions and so forth. I, I definitely think though, Todd, that you know, if we're planning these days zeros, that certainly there needs to be somebody who can 
effectively represent each of the projects. Yeah, good, good point, Chris. So I guess we'll have to figure out how to how to handle that, but. Um, Okay, any other questions? So uh, this is Tracy. I just want to say maybe I can spend some time and put together like a, a tentative uh, day one, day zero, whatever we're calling that uh, proposal for what that day might look like. And then um, that might help us determine who should be there from each of the different projects. How's sounds that good. work? Yep, okay, that sounds good. Cool. All right, we'll tee that up for next week. Okay. Uh, where did my agenda go? Okay, uh, next up is Hyperledger Exploder. No, I'm sorry, Explorer. <laughs> Who is giving that readout? Hi, this is Satish uh, from DDCC. Hi, Satish. Hey, good evening, guys. Um, so, how does it work? Do you open it uh, on the screen share, or do I? I've, I've dropped the link for it into uh, Rocket Chat, so folks can pull it up on their, their screen. Yeah, I, I think it's okay. best if everybody has their own copy. OK, perfect. So I'll drop the link. Just... I'm going to copy the link here. I've dropped it into the, the TSC channel for those in there. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, so the project health. Uh, we made the Blockchain Explorer compatible with the version 1 of Fabric, um, and an announcement will be sent out soon. So, uh, Parda, who's the sponsor for this project, is working with Tracy Kurt. Uh, with respect to publishing a blog. And in this release, we closed about 19 tickets slash user stories, and um, we simplified the configuration to be able to connect to a network easily. And mm -hmm. there are no issues at this time. And uh, the release will be announced soon. Uh, so we made an informal announcement in the, um, um, in the chat channels to sort of get um, an, an early response from the people folks who are using a sort of a release candidate. And once we fix those issues, uh, uh, we'll be able to send the announcement soon. Um, and the overall activity in the past quarter, so we made some uh, significant contributions to be, to make it compatible with uh, the Fabric 1.0. Uh, the earlier version was working with 0 0.6. Um, and uh, no, the activity on the uh, Channel the blockchain explorer channel is, uh, is just the act, yeah the channel is quite active so we see uh, people asking questions and we're trying to respond as soon as we can and the current plans uh, in terms of current plan you know we are rearchitecting this to React JS to be able to you know uh, develop easily so uh, the current version of the code is not uh, so convenient to roll out new changes so. Uh, that's what we are working on, and a few things lined up on the roadmap. Um, and we are having the roadmap discussion uh, with uh, with the team uh, of the Explorer project. This includes people from DTCC, Amex, and um, uh, One Chain. And in terms of maintenance diversity, we added two members uh, from One Chain in the past quarter. And from contribution wise, so we have contributions from DDCC, OneChain, and uh, other individual contributors. Um, so that's what uh, the status so far. Any questions? Any question for Satish? Hi, Satish. Um, this is Paul. Oh, I have uh, two questions. One is about the, the React JS. I, I I saw the project is using React JS, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether it's um, compatible with the Hyperledger projects now. We can use that. 
when you say hi- compatible with hyperledger project meaning compatible with other hyperledger project i mean uh there should be some license issue before i'm not sure whether it's uh, resolved now okay i am not aware uh, maybe we can check with uh, the linux foundation legal team if, okay if, if it's still the status yeah i i will um, check that okay. uh, so get in touch okay thanks and uh, i i saw there are new uh, two new maintainers from wanchen so it, it where do you know where is the company is is wanchen or onchen I just want to make sure there's no typo. Uh, it, this is a company from China. Their website so, says one chain. Okay, okay, just to make sure. Be- because there okay. are two companies. One is one chain, and uh, the other is on chain. The on chain one should be in China too. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> All right. Thank Thanks, you. Satish. Uh, next up is me. Uh, here's the link. TSC. And uh, put it in the chat too. Okay. Um, So this is the second installment. Uh, We've been completely around the horn, as they say, in baseball. And um, and so now we're in the, the second rev for all the different projects. Um, obviously, we we didn't um, get a readout on Quilt, but they'll they'll join us in the in the next in the next round. Um, so, in terms of the project health, I think things are still uh, going uh, pretty well from my perspective. Um, you know, we're continuing to um, uh, add new contributors, and we're seeing. Uh, many of the contributors uh, sticking around, which is uh, also good, and so we're starting to actually get to the point where um, we've got quite a number of um, uh, of the contributors um, posting ten or more commits. It's uh, almost half, which is really, really a good sign from my perspective. Um, so we actually uh, reduced the the total uh, mix of IBMers. Uh, we dropped two um, percent from uh, from the the previous report in October. Um, uh, we did, uh, you know, uh, get a little bit of an uptick in terms of the code uh, commits that were landed since 1.0 um, from 49 to 50 percent uh, from IBM, but that's still. Um, I think, you know, from my perspective, it's it's still a good sign. Um, I think that the, the bump is probably likely because uh, we're coming up on a release and a lot of uh, fixes and so forth, and, and a lot of those are coming from IPM. So um, uh, we've uh, added uh, a number of commits. I think the number is something along the lines of 300 plus. Um, and uh, we've been putting out releases uh, on a monthly basis conti- uh, consistently. I think the only month that we didn't put one out was the end of December um, because of the holidays, but there really also weren't any 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 serious defects to, to warrant it. Um, and we're in the process of working towards a 1.1 alpha code freeze is actually, or not code freeze, a feature freeze is tomorrow, and then we'll be working on the, uh, the death march to, to knock down the bug count. Um, although the, the good news is that while the bunk count is uh, something like 130 something, uh, a lot of those are actually questions and not really bugs. So we just need to go through and triage some of those. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll have 101 alpha out by the end of the month and, um, and then probably beta in February and uh, final 1.1 release in uh, in March. Um, 
I think, it, oh, I skipped over the issues. Um, so the issues that we have are still relating to JIRA. I'd really like to sort of uh, tee off on the, the, the uh, obtaining a, a JIRA expert to help us configure JIRA with GitHub and Garrett so that we can be using it a little bit more effectively, have it automatically changing status and stuff like that, as well as um, you know, just getting the, the workflows and so forth um, uh, much more effectively configured uh, than they are. So I don't know, Todd, or I don't know if Dave is on and what the status of uh, getting a JIRA con contractor in to, you know, an expert to come in and help us with that, but it's still a pressing need for us. Yeah, hey, this is Dave. Um, we have been making some improvements to JIRA lately. Um, we've been able to get the security uh, permissions and stuff all lined up. Um, we do not have anybody lined up necessarily to come in and, and fix it, but that's on my short to-do list, actually. So, um, Expect an email from me out to the TSC to start gathering some of the requirements. Thanks. Yeah, it's actually not just a, it, it, it's a bit difficult, right? Because it's not just a JIRA guy, right? We need somebody to help us with the entire integration. So when somebody has an issue that he works on and then he submits a change request, we would like to see something like in review. It's the whole, we need everything, like the, the three mechanisms to be in sync. So yep. yeah. Yep. That, that's a challenge. That would be great. Yeah. So um, I'll maybe, um, yeah. So in the coming weeks, we'll we'll definitely uh, I'll, I'll be doing a survey or something. We'll be gathering requirements so we can figure out what we need to change. Okay. Um, uh, continuing on. So I covered the releases. Um, in terms of activity, you know, the mailing list continues to be uh, fairly active. We had a uh, actually a nice spike in in December and November rather. Um, uh, traffic dipped in December, but it actually it dipped from the spike back down to just shy of normal uh, levels of approaching 200 or so uh, a month. Um, and uh, and Rocket Chat again continues to to churn away. Um, and we we actually, as I was putting this together, I went to Stack Overflow, and we had just ticked the 1,000th question on Hyperledger Fabric tag, which is. Um, Nice little milestone. We're about 100, uh, 1,003 actually this morning. Um, uh, where's my current plan? Uh, current plans in terms of um, uh, where we're we going with fabric. Obviously, we we um, we plan a one to one release in the first quarter. Um, it's tracking currently twenty one major features and epics. Um, and uh, and again, as with as always is the case, we're tracking everything in Jira. We have a dashboard that sort of highlights where we are in terms of getting there. Um, and uh, you know, basically, the the most important one, obviously, is going to be getting true live upgrade ca uh, compatibility from 1.0 to 1.1, uh, so that you don't have to bring a network down to to do the upgrade. Um, maintainer diversity actually grew uh, by vir virtue of the fact that we actually lost a couple of IBMers to attrition, uh, to State Street, and also to consensus. Um, and so now the, the total mix is there are 15 maintainers, nine from IBM, three from State Street, one from Acera, one from Huawei, and one from consensus. Um, and just a note, we did actually go through a bit of a retirement process for uh, the maintainers from digital assets. Um, uh, sad, sad note. I, although I, I did hear that actually, I think he's doing well. But Tamash uh, actually had to retire from uh, digital assets, and uh, he had to move to Germany for some uh, to get some treatment for some health issues. And um, uh, and the other maintainer um, uh, from from digital assets was reassigned, and so he hasn't been working on the project yep. for a better part of a year. Um, go ahead. Was somebody chiming in? No, no, I was just naming him. That's fine. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> um, in terms of contributor diversity, we continue to add new contributors, as I mentioned, and we actually have about half of them that are um, uh, 
uh, you know, starting to really engage where the, the number of commits uh, is in excess of 10. Um, so that's actually quite, uh, quite good news. Uh, basically, 18 new contributors uh, from four or more companies. Again, um, we don't uh, always have true visibility into who uh, people work for because they're using Gmail or other um, you know, personal emails for their commits, but um, uh, it's, it's good to see the, uh, the increasing contributions. And you know, I just sort of highlighted here the notable increased contributions from Secure Key, State Street, Hitachi, SAP, Oracle, and IT people. And that's pretty much it, unless people have questions. <clears throat> no questions. All right. Uh, I guess we should move on to the lab's proposal then. Um, Tracy or Arno, one of you guys want to run this one? Yes. Hi, this is Arno. All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a sore throat, so yeah, yeah, my voice, voice goes off. Tracy do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I should be able to speak. So. Uh, just if it goes off, don't worry, I'll be back shortly. <laughs> so, yes, the labs. So I made a fairly significant revision to the document. As I said in my email, for those who haven't seen it, uh, I did listen to the recording from last week's meeting and uh, I uh, tried to address, uh, you know, the points that were made during the meeting. I especially liked the change from maintainers to stewards for the labs. Uh, I was actually struggling with that part to clarify that there were like kind of two sets of maintainers the, in the lab themselves and at the higher level of the org. So the steward stuff makes that completely clear, which is great. As I said in my email, the main change for me, the significant change I would say is the clarification in the terminology so that we avoid any possible confusion as much as possible between the official projects that are being, you know, uh, under the governance directly of the TSC that goes through the approval process uh, with the HIP, you know, and, and starting an incubation and moving from there and the labs. So we started with the terminology of hyperledger lab projects and Somewhere, actually, while I was editing the document earlier, I had started removing this because I thought it was a bit clunky. But then, you know, I had a somewhat of an epiphany when I was working on the document yesterday that, you know, I realized that, in fact, just avoiding any kind of, you know, uh, combination of lab and project in the same sentence could could be a, a somewhat of a lifesaver in this instance because. If we merely refer to labs as such, as labs, we can keep the term projects for the official projects and never mix the two. And I mean, maybe you guys won't be so impressed. For me, it was kind of a breakthrough. And I revised the whole document. And in fact, I made a slight modification again this morning when I got up. It was on my mind pretty much all night. And um, so that, you know, even when we talk about moving from a lab possibly to a project. I had sentences that were still talking about project in incubation, which seems to imply there's a, some other kind of project. And so I actually removed that to say things like in the first sent or in the in the introduction, the second sentence, you know, can be started with the creation of a project. That's it. There's no like, you know, a project in incubation. So it's very clear it's like this really means a lab is not a project. So it, uh, I think, clarifies a lot of things. And I've, you know, I've revised the whole document. I was searching for the use of the term project to make sure that every instance was okay with that kind of definition. And uh, I think the document is much clearer in that respect. Now, there were several issues that were raised that I kind of addressed based on the discussion. I hope I captured the intent and, you know, although there was no formal agreement made during the call, there was clearly a few things where there seems to be, you know, emerging consensus and I tried to capture that in the text and, uh, and you know, 
it's it's if people have a problem with what I put, they should just raise issues. But so as it stands, I think there are a couple of issues or three left that we should discuss. The first one has to do with what it takes, what are the criteria to create a lab? And um, so there was this discussions yes, last week about a sponsor or mentor. I figured it was meant to be the same kind of concept that there is some form of, there is a person that will endorse the lab and that's a condition for the project or the lab to be created rather. And uh, there's a question as to, okay, who constitute, who, who qualifies as a sponsor? Uh, there were discussions in the, on the call as to whether it should be a committer or whether, you know, or, or something else. So I put in the text today that it is a committer of one of the Hyperledger projects. Uh, Dan already expressed himself in email that he would rather limit that to actually a maintainer. I'm completely open to that. The thing I actually, you can see there, there was a point three and point five that I scratched out. I voluntarily, obviously, you know, I left them there crossed out so that it wasn't just something that disappeared, people didn't realize. I had initially suggested we use five different people that was based on what the Earth 3 does for community groups. Um, there was this notion that, you know, maybe we should have at least one commitment, uh, one commit that's from the proposer, right? The requester of the lab. Um, I feel like we probably can get away with only have a sponsor. We just need to define what that sponsor is. So I'd like to open the discussion on that if we could start. So I, I put a comment in on this one. And again, my recollection from the discussion was that the proposer um, had to be a committer. That was, um, I think we pretty much um, uh, agreed that, uh, you know, to, to help sort of ensure that there's sort of continuity from a, committee, a, con a community perspective that they had contributed at least one commit um, so that, uh, and then the other part of it was the sponsor or mentor part, and I thought that we had agreed that it would be a, either a TSC member or a maintainer from another project. Uh, others may may disagree, but that, that that's my recollection from last week. Now I might go back and listen to the tape, but okay. So the first point you're making means that we would <clears throat> scratch point five, basically, right? Uh, remove yeah, the, put the it back in. Yeah. five. Put it back in. Right. Does that yeah. have to be I one of the proposers because there may be more than one? Are we satisfied with one of them? being a commuter or do they all have to be? Um, the, I guess uh, we'll... the origin of that came from the Apache labs and yeah. what they, they're they using that that commit as a, I think they were, they phrase it as a sort of social filter. See that, that somebody's at least participated once in a, in a healthy way. Um, since we also have this sponsor requirement, that's something that they don't have. Uh, I feel like so long as is one of the is one of the proposers has a commit that's fine. I don't know if it's complicated to make it more or less specific than that. But that's the thing. I, I didn't feel like we needed to have both the sponsor and have the proposer be a committer. Chris, you seem to be saying, yeah, we want both. I I, I thought that's where we landed. I mean, others may disagree, but that's what I thought. I mean, so I think we were people talking about up. both of them. Uh, we, were, we were speaking about both of them sort of in parallel, and I don't know if we really yeah. had a good dialogue about whether we needed both. I'm I'm kind of indifferent. I, I prefer the, the sponsor be there for sure, because that, that seems like a, a higher threshold. Yeah. Uh, the commit is nice to have, but I could go either way on it. That was well, my, I, my thought. That I, I thought, okay, if we add the sponsor and now make it like it has to be at least a maintainer, I feel like, uh, you know, enforcing that the, uh, the proposal is also a committer is somewhat irrelevant because the bar is higher anyway. 
Are we but I, 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 don't like don't force I guess I, I guess it could be I guess it could be um, uh, I guess it could be said that you know the social filter is well you've had to sort of solicit one of the TSC or a maintainer from another project to be your sponsor so that could be the social filter is there's there's a bit of a hurdle there um, I agree um, I do I do like, like the maybe. commit idea but. Go ahead. Somebody it, speaking. It, it seems like the filter around the idea of voting actually may, might make sense here as well, because it might make sense to have working group chairs also serve as sponsors, and then also we might see some actually that's of labs a project that's, come out of participation in one of these working groups. That's a good. Uh, that's a good ad, actually. I think in addition to maintainers or TSC. So let's capture that already. The, the sponsor, we seem to agree that it's either a maintainer of one of the project, a TSC member, I'm writing it now, yep. or a working group chair. That sounds good to me. If everybody's happy with that, that solves that issue. I would think then, so. Anybody disagrees? Sounds good. Seems like not. So now let's go back to that point five then. Given that, do we want to also require that the proposer uh, is a committer? I mean, you know, one possibility is that it's up to sponsors to require it. A sponsor might say, who are you? You know, I don't know you. Mm. Have you contributed to anything? And they might say, I would like to see you contribute to the project before I sponsor your lab. Yeah, if we want that true. to be, you know, broadly apply, applied, then it's better to put in the rules. So, Dan, you brought that one up, and you seem to be a little bit ambivalent now. You, is the sponsor, you know, su sufficient? If we trust the sponsor, right? <laughs> oh, I mean, I do. No, no, I mean, I mean, given that we trust the sponsor, is it not enough? Like, do we need to? If the sponsor would need some proofs to kind of, you know, build up. Yeah, that no, but I think you know the, the the point that Dan made was that the Apache Labs uses it as a social filter. In other words, it's sort of sure, 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 sure. So there's some interaction. I remember. Part of the community to begin with, and and so forth. Um, <laughs> and I think that's fair. Yeah, and. Uh, Part of what we were trying to also get here is that they're they're part of the community. They've they've been in, they've been interacting close enough with the community that what their what their lab is about is is relevant um, and it's in concert in some way with with what Hyperledger yeah. is doing. So I, I think a commit requiring a commit makes that a stronger requirement, um, but. Uh, Again, I, I don't feel so strongly about that that uh, we could make it should <laughs> with a capital, you know, like the twenty one nineteen. Oh, by, the, by the way, just to say, I, I really I like think the, can, the commit requirement. Yeah. I, I like the commit we, we requirement. We could also open it up. I think one level. We could also open it up Sorry, one level broader and say if they've done a, a, a significant contribution to the working group. I know we we do that sort of measurement when we do the voting list, at least we did this last year. Um, but I, I, because the lab is a, a code project in one way or another, I think a commit might make sense. Um, Actually, but so we, uh, Kelly, I think that may be your point, and maybe what we could just say is a proposer needs to be a member of the Hyperledger technical community and leave it at that. And so they could be a, an active and uh, you know, active participant in a working group or committing, you know, code uh, or serving on the TSC. Uh, that any of those, they're they're already part of the community, right? Yeah, I like you're that. not coming even reviewing, to, even even reviewing rules. some some change requests. Like I think the more we can encourage people kind of to 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 participate, the the more the better it is, right? As, as the TSC. So anything that kind of you know, encourages interaction, I think is good. So maybe it's another good opportunity to require. So I know I think the, 
the reference here should just be to, you know, EG has voting privileges in the annual election. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So I was trying to capture what you guys were talking about, that the really what we're interested in, in making sure that the proposers are a member of the tech events. Yeah. I think what we want to say is the proposers need to be a member of the Hyperledger technical community. And by definition, that means they have a vote in the annual uh, election and uh -huh. the criteria are established by whatever that criteria is. Very good. I get it. I don't. Do we know the exact term? We'll need to put a link there. Otherwise, I can search for. I this. think a link would be would be good. Um, uh, yeah, we defined it with VPN back in the day, right before the election. So yeah. Well, and where there's ambiguity, I think we err on the side of inclusion there, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course. We're not going to be too. Yeah. Should be a reasonable TSC. And I think uh, similar okay. to the TSC or the votes in the annual election, I think we deferred to the work group chairs to say yes or no if someone was active participant. So that could be an yeah. easy way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It, just a quick question. Um, are there any um, sort of legal um, issues that we have to go through uh, for membership or otherwise, or is that taken care of by the other clause? I don't believe so, Nick. I think, I mean, from a participation in the technical community, it, it's open to anybody. You don't have to be a member. Um, you're making a contribution under the DCO, and it's Apache yeah. license. Yeah, as, uh, as long as the DCO is taken care of, that should at least cover most of the big concerns. Yeah. Yeah, I think the process we have in place where people have to do basically a pull request to to start the process of, you know, proposing the lab forces them to have registered with the Linux Foundation and therefore committed to the TCO. Yep. So I think we're covered there. Okay, sounds like we're making progress. Can I scratch number three there? I scratch it off. I can, I can remove it. I didn't... Based on what we did, I think it's a no yeah, brainer. I think it covers it. Yep. So okay, so I'll add the link to the definition we use for the for the vote for the technical community part. Technical but community. other than that, I think that settles this issue. That's great. So next we have anybody wants to add anything to this? No. So let's move on. Then Tracy. You added this thing, I heard you on the call talking about diversity and while I understand what you're looking for, I have to admit I had no idea how to capture that in the document. Yeah, I I, uh, I think that's a hard thing to capture, right? Um, so I would be perfectly fine if we didn't capture it, but yet we um, recognize it, right? Um, especially the people who are going to be the sponsors. Okay. So that's more of a recommendation and it's in line with our code of conduct and all that stuff that you know you shouldn't you know reject lab proposal just because you don't like the guy or the person personally for whatever reason, right? That's right. So and again there is, you know, in case you haven't seen it, there is a clause somewhere, I forget where now, but that says basically if there are any issues, you can always escalate to the TSC. Whether it's, you know, prior to the creation or as part of the creation process or after for that matter, right? Okay, so next, there was an issue as to the name of the attic space in GitHub that we would use to move the dormant slash deprecated projects or labs, I should say. It's hard to change your language, but that's what we need to do. So, um, I, given all the concerns we have with mixing projects and labs, I felt that, okay, it doesn't cost that much to create a new uh, a GitHub org. And uh, we'd be better off using Hyperledger Labs Attic 
as a new org for that than using the existing one. But uh, I know Chris, you seem to, you know, lean the other way around. So I just think it makes the landscape a little bit less confusing. But I, I, I I'm, I, I don't really care either way, to be honest. One particular concern I had was that we have this wording about, you know, the fact that things can be essentially resurrected. So a lab that was moved to the attic could then later on be brought back to life if committer starts being more, you know, either responsive or active. And then, you know, just looking at the GitHub organization, you wouldn't necessarily see, oh, this is a lab. We would have a clear separation at the higher level between projects on one end and, and labs on the other. And then when you look into the attic, you just have everything in the same bucket. But yeah, I, I, I think it's fine to call it labs attic. Anybody else has an opinion? Dan, was you? Was it you trying to speak up? Yeah, I was just trying to understand clarification of what you were, uh, what you were trying to ferret out. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any issue. I just I didn't quite understand if it was a, if it was a, an issue of naming the the GitHub org or the process of pulling something out of the attic. Yeah, no, it's not the process. We are really talking with implementation at the GitHub level here. Uh, and you know, you actually want to move away the repo for the lab that's being dormant or deprecated, and where do you put it? So two options are either we move it to the existing. Is that actually do we have that already? The Hyperledger Attic Org. Uh, I believe so. We have an I... agreement to have one. I don't know if it exists, but okay. So we I'm... could use that, that SM Attic for everything. Or we separate the attic for the labs to keep no, a segregation between the two. Oh, we don't have an attic. I thought we did. Okay. So it's That's, theoretical. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I would imagine we only need it's to create when we actually want to use it. So that's why I wasn't sure it was even there yet. Yeah. I don't think we need to create it until we need it. Yeah. I thought we did have one, Chris. I, 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 recall, I thought we did. I, I, I could have sworn we did too, Greg. I, I, I I don't know. I just looked and it's not there. So isn't it called Hyperledger Archive right now? Oh, oh Archive. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Hyperledger dash Archive. Okay, so we need to change the name there then. But so, any other opinion on whether we should reuse the same archive space or, or org, GitHub org, or if we should create a new one? I prefer keeping it separate for the reasons that you described earlier, because as um, w as we've put some things into the archive, we've noticed that there are usually are lingering links and lingering activity on those projects. Um, and having a clear distinction between what was a lab and what was a project, I think, will be useful for the six to 12 months as those links um, um, disappear off the web. Okay. Any other opinions? Okay, so if there is no other opinion, I, I think we'll we'll use a different org. At least there are two of us that feel strongly about it. Is that okay? Nobody wants to scream at me for saying that. Nope. All right, then let's call it uh, done. We'll call it a different uh, name and I mean, use a different space. So that resolved that issue. The other one and is then, archives. <laughs> yeah. <sorry. I'll, laughs> Put an S there. Oh, really? There's an yeah. S. Okay, I'll, I'll fix and I'll go through the document <laughs> because it talks about Attic right now. So I'll change the name. That's not yeah. a big deal. Um, it's really editorial in nature. I'll fix that. And then the last one then is with regard to the representation that is being made by, you know, that we anticipate people will do. 
And so there is wording already, and I updated that wording based on you know that clear separation between what we call a lab and what we call a project. The question was, or is, you know, should we make people sign up to you know or commit to this to this rule as part of the um, you know making the proposal to create a lab and i don't know technically how we would do that if it's part of you know what is it would be part of but it's almost like well, a legal I, I, thingy right yeah so i think you know so there is a certain set of branding guidelines um that uh greg and team put out um not you greg but uh, greg wallace from the marketing um uh, the director of marketing uh put out um and there's a certain policing that goes on, I think, on a regular basis. And so, you know, somebody's looking at reports that say, you know, we found on the web Hyperledger something. And th I think they validate that. Um, I think if it comes up, then, you know, it, it's handled in a similar way, which is, you know, I guess a couple of strikes and you're warned. And then, you know, potentially legal yeah. action. Uh, for trademark violation, basically. Um, but uh, I think that should, I think, uh, you know, rather than forcing somebody to sign, you know, in blood or something like that, I think um, that part of the responsibility for the sponsor should be to make this known to the proposer and, you know, um, uh, you know, I, th I think that's part of the obligation of the sponsor is to sort of let them know what the rules of the road are. Um, did, did the marketing committee review if they were good with it being referred uh, as lab name, comma, a Hyperledger lab? Um, I yeah, know I that Dan Greg and did. Greg were both in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I mean, yeah, they put the original text. I, I think given it was, you know, sort of gone through, we should just make sure that Dan and Greg are given one last. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'm exactly. ready to review. And I don't know, if, I, I, I mean, I, I suspect that they've reviewed it with the, the marketing team, or, you know, the marketing working group, but maybe not, I don't know. But um, I think, you know, so I think we're, so, so I think we're at end of, the set of issues, right? Um, yeah. So just to finish on that one, though, I, you know, practically speaking, even though I think it might be nice to have a way to get them to click something saying, yeah, yeah, I'll respect that. I don't know how to implement it. So I'm biased against it just because for yeah. practical reason, I don't know how to implement it. So uh, I think, you know, if everybody is okay with what you said, obviously pending that, you know, the marketing communication people think that it's appropriate to have that. But as I said, I mean, this text initially comes from, I forget if it was Dan or Greg, but one of them, Ray also was involved and several people looked, you know, chimed in yeah. on that, that. I updated it based on the language to clarify, but that's their text. So I am pretty confident yeah. they'll be fine with it. Yeah, okay, great. Okay, so then I think what we ought to do then is give everybody another um, week to uh, to review it, and uh, and then we'll come back next week and we'll do the hamana hamana, or, or we could do email uh, actually if people are okay with that as well. Um, and uh, I would invite uh, Dan and Greg to weigh in as well, Todd. Cool, and I just uh, tagged both of them into the Google Doc. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do let's do email then. You know, maybe before next week's call. Okay. Thanks, Arno, for uh, really yeoman's work there, and Tracy. Uh, good job. Sure. Um, You're welcome. All right. I will notice that so flexible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then uh, I think we're at end of job and um, give everybody eight minutes back and we'll talk at you all next week. Thanks all. Cheers. All right. Thanks all. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Have a good day.